Hey y'all. So today we're going to review the section in chapter nine called the spirit child. And uh, I'm going to just start by reading a little bit and then we'll talk about it. So I hope you're doing well today. And I just thank you for joining me. So I hope you enjoy it. It says the spirit child. So we see that the union of opposites between ego and soul produces something of infinite value, the spirit child. And it is true that even when the ego roughly intrudes upon the more subtle aspects of psyche and soul, a cross fertilization is taking place. Paradoxically, by stealing the soul's protection and its ability to vanish into the water at will, the ego participates in making a child who will claim dual heritage, world and soul, one who will be able to carry messages and gifts back and forth between the two. So as we continue reading, I just want you to kind of be thinking about that, <clears throat> how she's calling out ego and soul, which are parts of us as being opposites. And the goal obviously is that we are completed by a union of sorts, by a cohesiveness. So um, there's a process here that needs to take place. And I want us to, um, to think about what the benefit of this, this union may be. It says, um, in some of the greatest tales, such as the Gaelic Beauty and the Beast, the Mexican Bruja Malagra, I hope I'm saying this right. The Japanese Tuskino Waguma, the Crescent Moon Bear, finding the way back to one's rightful psychic order begins with the feeding of or the caring for a lonely and or injured woman, man, or beast. That such a child who will have the ability to traverse two very different worlds can come from a woman who is in such a skinless state and married to something in herself or in the outer world that is so lonely and undeveloped is one of the constant miracles of the psyche. Something occurs within us when we are in such a state, something that produces a feeling state, a tiny new life, <clears throat> a small flame that thrives under imperfect, arduous, or even inhumane conditions. This spirit child is La Nina Milagrosa, a miracle child who has the ability to hear the call, hear the far off voice that says it is time to come back, back to oneself. The child is a part of our medial nature that compels us for it can hear the call when it comes. It is the child rising out of sleep, out of bed, out of the house and out into the windfield night and down to the wild sea that causes us to assert, as God is my witness, I shall proceed in this way or I will endure, or I shall not be turned away, or I shall find a way to continue. So it's this development. Remember, the spirit child um, is just that. In the story, um, the seal woman and the, and the hunter, the fisherman, they had a child. And so the child symbolizes our spirit, which is supposed to be the union between our ego and our soul. And here she's explaining that it creates this sort of um, steadfast quality within us um, of endurance, of, um, of continuing. Um, and so that's a beautiful uh, gift, right? <clears throat> it says, it is the child who brings the seal skin soul skin back to his mother. It is the child who enables her to return to her home. This child is a spiritual power that impels us to continue our important work to push back, change our lives, better the community, join in helping to balance the world, all by returning to home. If one wants to participate in these things, the difficult marriage between soul and ego must be made. The spirit child must be brought to life. Retrieval and return are the goals for mastery. So then she goes into a section um, talking about <clears throat> visiting a uh, federal women's prison in California. And she talks about, you know, some of uh, the women there and they were in a hardened state. And she says there was one woman in particular, they were doing a performance um, for, for the women. And uh, there was a violin playing as part of the performance. And this one um, woman there says, <laughs> 
This sound, that violin, unlocks a place in me. I thought I was locked up good and tight forever. Her broad face with bo was boast. Her broad face was both puzzled and ethereal. My heart broke on itself, but in a good way, for I saw that no matter what had happened to her, she could still hear the cry from over the sea, that call from home. In the sealskin soulskin story, the seal maiden tells her child stories about what lives and thrives under the sea. She instructs through her stories, shaping this child who was born of her union with the ego. She is forming the child, teaching it the terrain and the ways of the other. The soul is preparing this wildish child of the psyche for something very important. So I view this as a creation within us, <clears throat> as, as we produce the spirit child, the spirit part of us, as we develop that and therefore um, start to create this union between ego and soul. It's just a, a beautiful way to view, a beautiful lens to view um, our spiritual um, maturity and growth. And I, I, I personally view this as expanding expanding within and uh, you know we talk a lot about being able to withstand trials and tribulations and hardships but what if also we need to expand to be able to withstand the power of love because the Bible tells us the greatest of these is love love is the most powerful force in existence so you know, it, it reminds me of um, the Bob Marley song, you know, could you be loved? Because some people can't. Some people have not expanded within themselves to be able to receive love and, and or give it, you know. So there has to be this expansiveness within us. Um, but um, <clears throat> it clearly, you know, we have to keep it guarded. So it's... Um, it's just a mixture of um, beautiful gifts that we get after going through these hardships. In the end, we can see um, that we are expanded, that we have grown, that there is good that comes from um, these horrible situations and experiences. So um, after this, I can definitely say for myself, and um, it wouldn't surprise me if you resonate with this as well, but um, when you have been expanded and... Um, you have reconnected with that depth inside of you that was placed there by the divine. Um, droplets will never do again. They'll never do. And so um, I just hope this has inspired you. It was a short section and I just thought I'd keep the video short to go along with it. I hope it gave you some, gives you some things to think about. And we'll dive into the next section um, on Monday. Um, well, I don't know what day you're going to be watching this, but um, we'll go back into chapter nine and try to finish it out in the next video. So I hope you have a beautiful day and I will see you soon. Oh.